everybody i'm glitz martins it starts now news up now um today marks the sixth day of protests around the country and to talk about that and also how to get the word out there on social media i'm joined by kevin nichols he is a social media and branding consultant hi kevin how's it going i'm well how are you i'm pretty good thank you hey um i know this is kind of crazy because you have the pandemic and then all of a sudden for six days, now we have protests, which it's important to us as society, um, as a Latino guy, myself, is to go out there and protest and we, uh, you know, just asking for more respect. Um, how do you see these protests around the country? Well, I see them as a, a necessary evil in the sense that, um, unfortunately, this is cyclical. Um, we've seen this over and over again for the past 20 or 30 years and uh, there's nothing new as far as the response that happens so um, when incidents like this occur it's best to resolve them very quickly in order to um, at least avoid this from happening but also i think that this time what i feel might be different is that um, i don't believe that it's just going to go away this time. For some reason, I have a feeling that um, we're going to actually have to deal with the reform that needs to occur in order to from, for us to move on uh, past this. Uh, and so I'm, I'm hopeful um, based upon that. So um, do you, how do you feel about the Bay Area? Because um, last fr uh, Friday and also last night was pretty much uh, with a lot of damage. Uh, with looting in a bay, a lot of windows, a lot of merchandise, you know, stealing. Um, how do you feel about the Bay Area? I think it's sad in all the different cities, especially the cities that um, that this incident or incidents like that have not occurred, I guess, in the last week or so, because there it seems to be a disconnect, unfortunately, where people don't link the rage that you're seeing um, with these other cities. So like, why is Oakland on fire? Why is Oakland burning? This happened in Minneapolis. But what I think the, where people miss out on is that they're looking at it from the damage aspect or loss of property aspect of things. Whereas here we are saying that, you know, a human life has been lost and many lives are continually lost um, at the hands of police officers. And so to equate, you know, what happens to a, a bank's window or a, a store's window to um, a black person or any person of color's life uh, on a systematic standpoint, I believe uh, is not the, the right equation to look at. So I, although I don't condone violence and I don't think that, I personally don't think that that is the right approach. I'm more of an organizer, a community organizer and get people out to organize around issues and raise money about issues and um, vote and do other things like that but I don't want to be judgmental or say that um, the way that people are expressing themselves is something that's not right. I believe always we'll have somebody who will take advantage of those protesters mm -hmm. and you know, it's gonna happen what happened last night um, around the Bay Area. The looting was just, the damage is just too awful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are suffering, especially small businesses, are suffering because of the pandemic already. And then all of a sudden there's more cleanup to do and rebuild. How can we rebuild that? And now entering under your specialty, using social media to get the message out there. So one thing I want to point out is that, you know, particularly when we have individual incidents like that, it's easy to kind of, you know, take that incident and have it fester or get bigger than what it really is or needs to be you know on one hand you know individuals having issues are one thing but systemic racism and the things that we're talking about with these protests are more about you know racism in its structural sense so it's a situation where you know one person isn't, isn't controlling a lot of things people are are looting and, and destroying businesses and stuff in their communities because of structural racism where the whole entire system is built against people uh, making progress and achieving. So um, I just want to make sure we you know, draw that distinction about what's happening now out there versus individual skirmishes we may have with individuals who don't have any power over us. 
but to answer your question regarding you know social media and how this whole thing um, plays itself out with you know these protests and people using social media i feel like you know it's ironic but it's almost as if something like this has to occur in order to be able to shine the light or shine attention on different things or become an influencer or become someone who is is um famous for example like that individual who took their camera out and recorded this incident you know would be probably a nobody to anyone for but this person had the courage to take their phone out and record this so now this person was receiving either death threats or you know receiving a whole different amount of t attention just from this one act so it's it would be better if someone was doing something like where someone wasn't involved getting hurt to be able to um, gain followers or gain attention for doing things. And I think that that's where the struggle is for me. Um, either you have to pay enormous amounts of money to social media companies in order to gain followers or get your message out. Um, but you either have literally have to shoot or kill someone in order for someone to retweet or make something go viral. And uh, that's the cyclical nature of, I guess being in America or just being in the world we live in today. Uh, and that's a bigger issue that I have. So do you think, um, you, you start saying that when you start talking, um, you give me the impression that you think this protest is different from others in history. Yes. Why do you think that of that? I think it's different because I think that it's enough, enough times that we've fallen for the okie doke, so to speak meaning that you know we've had you know this is actual incident is the exact same scenario as eric garner in new york we saw how that happened he was it was recorded um the whole thing after that was about getting body cameras for police officers right what difference does it make if you have a body camera on you if you're recording the death live and nothing still happens so at some point people are going to get fed up with getting making little progress when it comes to having an incident like this and the resolution meaning the policy change or you know something done on a large scale so i think that that americans right now are fed up and the reason why they're going on day six and after the first protest i think day or two after they arrested the uh, the the main individual involved but it hasn't stopped or the, the protests haven't gone away yet. And I am uh, i don't believe that if they uh, charge the other officers that were involved that this will stop either. So I think that there's going to need to be greater concessions made um, in, after this is over. So there's gonna need to be some, some policy changes in, with how police are policing. And there's gonna need to be some accountability Look, um, I don't want to, I, I just want to make a point here. I'm not um, against any type of protest. What I am against of is the, the looting, um, the vandalism. I think we don't need to do that. And as you pointed out, um, yesterday I was at the Civic Center um, around 3-ish p.m. Um, it, it is, you know, there's some people with good intentions out there. And I think there's other types of people that take advantage of the situation to do all their bad stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to make sure um, I'm not against at all. Um, mm -hmm. I think the system needs to change. Uh, we need to change as a one. Um, I think we are just so tired of that sort of react reaction and action from uh, law enforcement. And I'm not generalizing because there are good people out there too like in every single professional uh, profession. Um, so how can a politician use the social media and rebrand or branding themselves um, and to have their message heard? Well, I think that number one, their brand comes from their authenticity. So right now, there's a lot going on. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to be in front of on issues, etc if a politician right now is quiet or hiding behind um, out of fear or other reasons to speak out and speak against uh, what's happening um, it's going to come off disingenuous and not very uh, believable at the end of the day 
if and when they decide to run for office and all of a sudden have a voice and want to speak out on things. It's a little too late at that point. And so um, what I would say is uh, you have to be authentic. That's what motivates and inspires people. You know, If you're faking it, people will know it. And it will not help people catch on to your message. Um, it's, it's very difficult to build a brand without any substance, substance underneath. So that's where I would start. Like, who are you? you know, why you other than someone else? Why should someone write a check to you? Why should someone vote for you? And what is your investment? And if you can't answer those types of questions, then it's going to be very difficult for people to want to follow you or to, to support whatever it is you're doing. Um, at least 2,564 people uh, were arrested only on this weekend in 24 cities in the United States. Do you feel um, scared to go out? Yes. After uh, Ahmaud Arbery's murder, um, I, I run in, in my neighborhood, you know, so obviously I definitely um, am worried. I've been pulled over and harassed by police on numerous occasions at gunpoint. Um, so it's not a situation where I feel like these incidents are abnormal or they're not, they don't hit home. Uh, so that's not the problem or the issue. Uh, I think that though, I'm not going to live my life in fear. So I get up every day, I do what I do, I still run when I want to run and I do what I want to do when I want to do it. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm American and I have just as much right to be here than is anyone. There are a couple of things that can be done. Can you give me some examples? Yes, very concretely. Number one, there's, there's no need for us to have to experience another death by someone choking someone. I mean, that is an easy solution and that doesn't require anything. Every major city after this is over should be reviewing their policies and saying, do we have this in here or who does it? Let's get rid of this, number one. Number two, it's a matter of like, you know, I know that there's police associations, police officer associations and different organizations that exist, whatever. There just needs to be, and I'm a coalition builder and a, and a strategic thinker and strategic partnerships. These cities, these mayors, they meet, you know, at different organizations. So all the people that run cities need to look at, I don't know if it's a retreat or whatever, but look at these policies and procedures that are out there on the books regarding police reform and police uh, you know brutality and literally get rid of them or um modify them because they're there on the books for a reason a lot of these cities don't want to change these policies because they don't want their officers to be held accountable that's part of the racist structural racism i was talking about earlier so if that's not the case and they recognize that these are bad things then you actually have to go out and do something about it so, you know, Colin Kaepernick didn't kneel just, you know, thinking that, you know, he's going to solve the world by just, you know, putting his knee on the ground. But at least what he was looking at was at least tackling police brutality as one place where we can make progress. Don't you think sometimes um, we need to start from early ages to teach the, the kids how to respect each other? Doesn't matter who you are, if you're blue, white, pink, whatever it is. Who you, whoever you are, but it needs to start early on um, ages. It does, definitely. That's why I do a lot of work with, with youth right now. You know? um, but at the end of the day, you know, and I also do diversity consulting, but you can't really deal with what people you know, look like or what gender you are if you have those issues about humanity. I mean, it's one thing to... to be able to deal with someone at a young age, but you can't teach humanity to people. You know, kids, they don't understand it. They're taught at a young age racism. They're taught to dislike people that don't look like them. They don't learn it coming out the womb. So we have to stop that type of parenting so that people don't teach their kids to hate. It's not something that, that it comes innately. Well, um, great words right there. Um, thank you so much, Kevin. I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, I hope we have a better circumstances and better things to talk about. Um, and I hope to see you next time soon as well. Great. 
thank you for the opportunity and um, good luck with this.